you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Death Camp, Ian Bokett, love it. Yeah. Great introduction. Um, so, I've got a Rubik's Cube. Would you mind just shuffling it up a little bit? But... <laughs> Steve, before this, did shuffle it up because he didn't trust me uh, to do anything, honestly. And I just remember at the start, he said people on the front row wouldn't be interacted with at all. So I'm really sorry. Is that, is that okay? It's fine. Okay, no more interaction at all. I'll barely even look at anybody, I promise. Um, yeah, so I was added quite late to this bill, and I haven't performed live in quite a long time. I'm going to do some spoken word poetry type stuff about feelings, about maths, about science, and hopefully one of the three will resonate with somebody. Maybe. <laughs> do we have feelings? Who's got feelings? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, no. not worth it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost Christmas. Okay, so as I haven't performed in so long, I do. Discussing feelings still. <laughs> Don't do that, right? Um, yeah, as I haven't performed this so long, I do have a copy of my book up here, just in case I forget the words. And as a really good product plug, it does make a great gift for Christmas. It is a great toilet book. A Lou Reed, if you will. What a hilarious joke. Can I have my Rubik's Cube? Yes. Thank you. You weren't playing around, were you? No. Okay, right, thank you. Um, I'm going to do a poem called Rubik's Cube. And it's about a maths teacher. I work in a school, I'm a science technician. It's a love poem. And I shouldn't explain poems before I start because it makes them awful. Right. Um, she w Let's give her a name. Anyone have a name? Sally. Sally was doing a Rubik's Cube when I first worked up the nerve to converse with her. I also noticed that a lot of the colours on this look the same under these lights. So this is going to be great. When I first worked up the nerve to converse with her. It was at a Christmas party for the staff of the school where I earned my living. In the pub across the road, she was sitting far from the bar, working hard on her puzzle, uncomfortable in the company of those embittered by years of working in education and those embittered by years of working in central London. <laughs> it's awful. She was about my age, a maths teacher, newly qualified, and she had one significant figure. First bad maths joke, one significant figure, <laughs> with a slight opposite over adjacent, tan, acute, Tan, acute, cute. And when she spoke, she was sweet. Five sugars with her tea, an odd number of sugar cubes, really. Odd, even. With so many fish in the sea. I've never been one to go fishing. Wishing she could make the first romantic move, I'd help her with Rubik's clues until she invited me to drop her a line. Gave me her number and I gave her mine. To all her decimal places she knew pi, she'd have no trouble remembering 07715314159. There's a fine line between a fisherman and a fish. And we were similar in a way that made anything seem possible. Totally exploding the axiomatic principle of explosion, eroding its reliance on contradiction to fiction, I'll admit an initial addiction to her cosine heart. She was number one from the very start, 24 plus two eyes, and made me a complex 24th birthday card with a mathematical formula on the front to start, into which when you plug the date would give my age, and it was just so romantic for that day, but with such temporal limits. By tomorrow, the date would change, like love that way, she explained. It's never enough to just love a person, because a person has to age. Plot a graph of their personality versus days. The idea is not to love one single point, but to love their curves, the way they change, and I loved her curves just fine. I was a secant line, touching her in at least two places at any given time. In the prime of our lives, like five or 1,279, I'd find she'd talk, was the wisest speaker. Said, let's live in the moment, like displacement times forced time sign theta. I believed her. In bed I could never dream to beat her. Cause she'd come first, I'd just follow the leader. Simple harmonic motion pleased her, freed her with a constant damping beneath her. Better than average between the sheets, I mean to say she wasn't a standard deviant either. Love came from the ether, a sinusoidal spark that reached the heights I have to teach the world the love that one can find with a mathematics teacher or even any human alive. You'll derive that nobody can own these numbers. They're the closest thing to universal truth that this world has dealt us and just like deltas they can change us make lovers of strangers take us from cradle to grave and place new babes in mangers love for me it's like the number e it's irrational eternal transcendental a fundamental constant i was taught the importance of by a mathematics teacher with a rubik's cube and i've never since forgotten thank you very much Thank you. Science show off. On brand, show off. <laughs> Definitely on brand. Um, for my next poem, 
It's about a three-minute poem. Uh, chances are I'm going to forget a lot of words to it, which is why I left it right to the end. Um, usually I'd interact with people in the audience, but we've established that's not going to happen. I'm going to use the <laughs> microphone stand, I think. Yeah, I use the microphone stand. Sally. Hi, Sally. Um, this is a poem more on the science side of things. I trained as a physicist, um, and it's called Half-Life. Does anyone know the half-life of carbon... 14? 16? Carbon-14, the one in the bones, when we use carbon dating. Good, because I can't remember that. <laughs> um, the carbon-14 in our bones has a half-life of 5,730 years. That sounds right. <laughs> when my bones were much younger than this, I was definitely a science geek, and I didn't have a lot of self-confidence. I didn't think I'd amount to much. I didn't think anybody would ever need me. But some people tried to help, like, come on, Ian, for you, the sky's the limit. Well, fuck that, and it's quite relevant today, because, girl, you make me feel like an astronaut. Forever past the outer atmosphere, we've never met, but I'd have bet that we had before. Forget everything I've ever had a passion for. I'm a mad matador, waving flags at your Christian to your scent. You're dressed in a desperate red, your misspoken truths, your tilted grammar. You live in a world where getting off on the wrong foot means your gynecologist finds a toe ring. I daren't ask you Achilles' heel. You feel like you've spent your whole life being beaten by the dealer, but call me Hamlet, cause that's going on for a while. <laughs> Dirt in the second row. <laughs> Thanks for not sitting on the front, that would have been too disgusting. <laughs> Call me Hamlet because Ophelia. Shakespeare, more cultural classy. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Hamlet because Ophelia and that, French, and that French lace secret you share with Victoria. There were the beginnings of a story here. When we touch, there's electricity. We don't know how to conduct ourselves, orchestrate our timpani hearts. They beat a symphony, simply start to sin too simply. Just take me to your childhood treehouse. I'll go out on a limb and hope you kiss me like you kissed your first love. Clumsy and earnest. When you get up to speak, the pupils in my eyes sit down and pay attention. I could listen to you talk about how much you hated Avatar until you're blue in the face. Such an innocent way you tell me you're hanging more than a bad telemarketer there's a chip on your shoulder that sometimes stops your dress from slipping off but tonight I'm starting to feel bolder when we're older I want to wake up to the snap crackle and pop of you plugging in your guitar I'll play piano as a percussion instrument and with our theremin love we can make music without ever having to touch still I bet we will Transfer body heat by convection, or on special occasions, even advection. I already love your cocaine white complexion, not to mention your sensual lines, your art, you're the darkest wine, your perfection by design, and your boyfriend's also quite fine. Your boyfriend, your boyfriend, Tim, is also quite fine. <laughs> so, I'll invite you both back to mine, because when I say I'm bisexual, I sure as fuck don't mean just one at a time. Like Noah, I've got animals forming a line. They come two at a time like buses. Fuck it, it's a frenzy. I'm Will Mackenzie, because I need someone in between us. Always, can't stop me being a queen, because I move always. Spent my university days with so many single men, I earned my bachelor's. While being a slave for so many girls, I earned my master's. Call me a PhD deviant, acid tongue, you'll be feeling it. Three's company, I want to be the CEO. When I say I love you, I want to hear we know. It's not about being greedy, it's just perhaps a little tiny bit about being greedy, Sally. I mean, I still just need someone to need me. You can't change biology that easily. We're hardwired to love freely. So for now, I'll be me loving whosoever is near me twice as much as I love myself. And that's not half as much as I know I should when I should love myself, right? Even though I've been playing both genders like 12th night in a row. I had to break out of the half-life, the halves and the half-nots, the half-truths of half of those I meet are lovers, half of those are friends. No, it's just that half of those are love forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Three, two, one. <laughs>